Now, oil prices are still at multi-year lows. Of course, you'll have noticed that at the petrol pump or on your heating bill, where there seems to be a direct correlation between what's happening in the markets and what you pay at the pump and to stay warm. However, at the travel agent's office and at the airline ticket office and the ticket desk, it seems to be extremely uncoordinated. Airline fuel expenses have tumbled year over year, but ticket prices haven't kept pace. Look at the average airline fare is down 14%, but fuel expenses are down some 20%. And bear in mind that fuel makes up roughly 30 to 35% of an airline's cost base. The mismatch is forecast to be even more extreme next year. It's driving airline profits to their highest levels in decades. Tony Tyler is the Director General of IATA and told me airlines are putting the windfall to good use. The lower fuel prices, though, are helping everybody, giving, having buying time for everybody to do, uh, to do this kind of work. And, of course, uh, that is exactly what a lot of the carriers are now doing, restructuring themselves, you know, mending the roof while the sun is shining. If they're mending the roof while the sun is shining, let's look at some of the things that they're doing it with. First of all, why haven't prices fallen as far? Hedging. Many airlines, there are three key reasons. Airlines are locked into contracts to buy fuel at old, higher prices. These so-called hedges still have some years to run off. Now, this year, most hedges should have been unwound and we should start to see that going through. But the hedging argument is still valid. The next is demand, not costs, are driving prices. Uh, the number of flights, of course, has been reduced, planes have got smaller, and the aircraft are now flying full. It's simple supply and demand, particularly at this time of the year. If you want to cross the Atlantic in business class in January, expect to pay an arm and a leg. And finally, investments. Investments in plane and infrastructure. It was badly delayed during the recession. Now, many airlines have spent money. They're buying the 787 Dreamliners, the 350s from, uh, from Airbus, and the airports have also invested in new terminals and uh, runways and infrastructure, which, of course, boosts landing costs and on-route charges. Take the three reasons together and you see why Perhaps unfairly, we're not gaining the benefit. Simon Calder is the travel editor at The Independent, and I asked him what consumers will need to see will be productions and reductions coming soon. If you're an airline and your hedge positions have not unwound by now, certainly by spring 2016, then you've been doing something really quite seriously wrong. What we've seen, of course, for the last uh, year or two, is many of the airlines, particularly, I must say, the budget carriers in Europe, paying far more than the spot price for fuel. Those hedge positions have now unwound and they should be really reaping the benefit or, indeed, their passengers should be. And that's really the nub of it, isn't it? Because we can accept that they were all caught on the wrong side of the hedge. However, once the hedge unwinds, the fear is it'll go to the bottom line rather than to cutting prices. <laughs> or maybe a bit to cutting prices, yeah. but mainly to investors. Well, as you know, the price of any airline ticket is what the airline thinks they can get from your wallet on the day for that particular seat on that particular flight. And guess what? Going across the uh, Atlantic, uh, there's been a lot of discipline on capacity for once, which means that you are simply seeing lots more people chasing basically the same number of seats, and that has sent prices sky high. And so, therefore, yes, at a time when the airline's costs are doing a very nice kind of gentle uh, reduction, you and I are paying more than we've ever done to cross the Atlantic. However, that is going to improve because what tends to happen is that once fuel prices get low enough, you do automatically get an increase in capacity because guess what? People are thinking, hang on, that old 757 we've got or that 20-year-old 777, um, they might not be very efficient, but these days it doesn't matter. They cost us effectively nothing to operate. We'll put those into the market. And are, are we going to see that happen? It is happening already. If you look, for example, at Aer Lingus, you know, not known for great innovation, this airline is, from next year, launching a route which I never thought I'd see. It goes from Hartford, Connecticut to Dublin. 
And they're doing that with a, a chartered in 757. They think that they can make a decent amount of money flying to New England and, and, and back to Ireland. That's Simon Calder of The Independent. Winter is coming for cable.